So we have the problem that $695 has been invested um, and then after a certain period of time, $112 of interest has been earned. We're told that the interest rate is 12% per annum. Hello, Seb. And that interest is compounded monthly. And the question that is asked is how long will it take to earn that amount of interest? So like we would do with any problem really is we start with the formula. And I'll use this form of the formula, which is that A is equal to the principal outside of 1 plus the rate to the power of t for time. Principal outside of 1 plus r to the power of t. We right down the back or? Okay, just try and focus for a moment, please. So there we go. That's the formula. And what we need to do from here is effectively just work out what we know and what we don't know or what can we calculate. So we're given the amount that was invested, which is $695. Which of these... So which of these values here is the amount that was invested? Is it A, <coughs> or P, or R, or T? Ash? It is P. It's the principal. It's the initial amount. So $695 was invested. So that's the initial amount. That's the principal. $112 of interest was earned. Now, we don't use the interest earned in... The formula, remember, R stands for the rate. And what does A stand for? It does stand for the amount. Someone be a bit more specific. Thank you, Baz. The principal and the interest combined. Okay, so what we can do is we can just start filling that kind of information out. So the amount is equal to 695 plus $112. Okay, so the principal, the amount we started with, plus the interest. And that gets us $807. Okay, all good so far? Now I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so I can fit, fit it on. Hopefully this will work. Zoom, 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 zoom. Zoom, zoom. There you go. Okay. So that's $807. Uh, what else do we... We know the principal. That's one, uh, $695. So that's cool. Now the rate we probably need to spend a little bit more time on. The rate we know is 12% per annum, but the story doesn't end there. What do we need to do to the rate in order to, for it to be compatible with our problem? Yes, getting a few right answers there. Dividing by 12. So 12% per annum is 1% per month. And I did that by dividing by 12. Okay, and as a decimal? Yeah. Make sure you can do that sort of thing in your head. You don't have to reach for your calculator to do that sort of stuff. So we've got the amount. Okay, so that's good. There's the amount. There's the principal. There's the rate. And the only thing we don't have is the time period. And that's what we have to find out. So unsurprisingly, the, the information is not directly there in the question. So we've got everything we need. So the next thing we do is we substitute in. So if the amount equals P outside of 1 plus R to the power of T, then the amount is $807. So therefore, $807 is equal to the principal, which is $695 outside of 1 plus 0 0.01 to the power of the thing we don't know, which is T. Okay, so that's a straight substitution. We've substituted in the stuff that we don't know. Okay, any questions so far? All righty. So, let me just get rid of some of the stuff here that we don't need at the moment, if I can.
I just leave this with this. Okay, cool. So that's what we're uh, working out from here. So first thing we can do is basically just um, getting the problem down to the um, to t being by itself as usual. So we can, for example, divide both sides by six ninety five. We always divide. We always do the same thing to both sides. Remember to keep it balanced. So that gets rid of the six hundred and ninety five, and that leaves us with one. I might just do the addition as well. One plus point oh one is one point oh one to the power of t, and eight hundred and seven divided by six ninety five is. Oh no, what is it? Doesn't say in the uh, in the booklet. Bum, bum, bum. Get the calculator. Eight hundred and seven divided by was it? Cool. So 1.16 is equal to 1.01 to the power of t. Now, we have done these problems before in uh, core maths. I know I have it with my class. This is effectively an exponential problem, isn't it? And in methods, you should have by now done logarithms. We're doing it now. You're doing it now. And even if you haven't done, if you're not doing methods, it's not too bad a reach from here to go to, from here to the answer. I'll go through the logarithm work for you. Now, let's just say you didn't know logarithms. How could you solve this problem without logarithms? Starts with trial, ends and error. Sorry, Kimmy? Trial and error. Trial and error. So you could do that. You could say, well, what happens when t equals 1? What does that work out to be? Oh, 1.01. That's too low. What happens when t equals 44 million? Oh, that's a really big number. That's too high. And then you just keep on working it out. until Don't try 44 million. It'll be very big. Um, but then you could just keep on working it out until you work out um, the exact value. So you could do that. Um, a little bit of maths using logarithms is kind of handy though. So what we basically do is if we remember that balancing equations works by the following principle, and the principle is as long as I do something to one side, if I do it to the other side, then we're golden, then it'll, it'll get us uh, to our answer. What we're going to do is we're going to use a function called uh, the logarithm function, and we're going to take the log of both sides. So... There's the log function. So we've got the log of 1.16. And it's a calculator operation. I mean, in the olden days, even before I was a student, which is like totes ages ago, uh, we'd, they used to use um, logarithm tables, and you'd have like a book, and you'd have to look up the values and work out what the logarithm of a particular value is. Um, but luckily, we don't have to do that. We take the log of both sides. Oh, what's that? It's unreasonable, that's what it is. Um, and the log of 1.01 .01 to the power of t. Okay, so we've logged both sides, taken the logarithm of both sides. And just so you know, the logarithm is basically, the way logarithms work is that um, if you've got 10 to the power of x is equal to 1,000, so x is equal to what? Three. Three, yeah. So the logarithm is based, the way the logarithm works is, therefore, log of, um, of, oh, now I've got, now I'm mixing it up. Log of a thousand is equal to x. That's how it works. That's, that's the relationship of the logarithm. So it's basically taking the, lo it takes the logarithm and returns a value for 10 to the power of. Um, that's for a, a base 10 logarithm. You can have more than base 10. Yep. Sorry, is this, is this something for the air sketch thing for me to put down on my... No, it's not air sketch, sorry. Sorry, I'm putting it in a different little app today. Anyway, so that was just how logarithms work. You don't have to know how logarithms work. I'm just saying that's what, what, how they work. So you've got log of 1.16 is equal to log of 1.01, and log is this function. You don't have to know how it works. You just need to know that it's a function, and it's a function that your calculator has. Hooray, which means that we can use our calculators to solve it. But one nice little um, use of the logarithm function, and again, um, I'll just do this in maybe a different colour so you can just, it's not part of the solution. But there is a, a logarithm rule which basically says if I take the log of a number raised to a power, then that's the same as n times the logarithm of the number. I'll just put it in brackets so you can sort of see where the function is. Okay, so <coughs> if I have a number which can be expressed as a power, like I have here, 
okay? So A to the power of N. Then that power can be basically shunted across and popped down there as a multiplication instead. So the log of A to the power of N is equal to N times log A. Okay, now the reason why that's handy is because in problems, exponential problems like we've got now, um, I want to get rid of all that. Uh, we can basically um, use that particular rule in order to uh, sort of solve our work here because we can basically use the rule to get that t from over here down to here. Uh, sorry, this t here, sorry, down to here. So the next line would be um, log of... 1.16, and that's just a function, it's just a number, is equal to t times the log of 1.01. .01. So instead of it being a power now, it's sort of been brought down to the same level as everything else. And that's really, really useful. Because what you can do now is log 1.01 .01 is just a number. It's a number from your calculator. So now I can divide through by the log of 1.01, .01 and as long as I divide that side by the log of 1.01, .01, it's balanced. So these cancel out, leaving me with t, which I'm now just going to switch over to that side. t is equal to, and this, okay, this bit here I'm circling here, is just a calculator operation. On your calculator, you'll find a log button. It'll literally be L-O-G on your on your calculator and you type into your calculator log 1.16 close bracket divided by log 1.01 .01, close bracket equals so it's a calculator operation and you do that division and you'll get an exact answer of well, not exact actually it'll be approximately two decimal places of 15.02 and so therefore you can conclude that after 15.02 months the interest will have been earned. Now, you can slightly change it up a bit. You could say, well, approximately 15 months, or you might want to say, it's, it's so close to 15, it's really not worth doing it, but you could say the interest will definitely be earned by the 16th month. Okay? So that's basically it. So we, we've um, worked out the values that we need to do, or need to use, like, for example, the amount and the principal and the rate of interest per time period. And then we have to use this little tricky logarithm thing in order to go from having a power of t to bring it down there like so, which means we can then solve it. And that's basically it. Any questions? No?